because
to use Islamic studies, but Islamic review knowledge. Because Islamic studies, or Adirasat Islamiya, is a product of the colonial period. Uh, and that was uh, con confined uh, mainly to the so-called religious sciences. So in my paper, which is a Sharaf of Islam, I focus on the religious sciences, uh, the economic, the political, the socio-economic, the scientific, the technological aspects of Islamic studies uh, are not being touched here. But that uh, Islamic religious sciences can expand uh, as long as the Asul have fair bit, Wafar all have is sama. So the, the root must be really firmly grounded. This is what Prof. Osman said, uh, the unchangeable, the immutable. Uh, and then Faru uh, al is sama or Furu al is sama can be in many ways. But there is a, a, an organic relationship between the branches and the root. In the Western uh, studies of Islam, uh, the roots differ. And you can have branches and fruits without the roots. Or the roots are not necessarily in theology, the roots could be in, in colonialism, the roots could be in imperialism, the roots could be in neo-colonialism, uh, the roots could be in globalization, the roots could be in expanding the hegemony, uh, the roots could even be in, uh, in civilizational clashes, and so on. But for us, the roots are fair. And I think it is important that we maintain the firmness of the roots. At one time, this has also been also a subject in Brunei and uh, prior to the establishment of UNISA, and that was my point. I maintain in the discussions we had at the highest level with the ministers that uh, we should not be afraid of, of branching out as long as the roots are well entrenched uh, in the soil of revelation. Uh, in Wahi, uh, and the rest on the basis of, uh, of Aqal, um, uh, the Ilm al-Kasbi, uh, or Ma'rif al-Kasbiya, can of course uh, go into all kinds of things, including innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, so I do not touch on innovation and entrepreneurship, I simply expanded on what Prof. Osman has already uh, laid down. And of course, we have people going to talk about the entrepreneurial dimension, economic dimension. You have uh, Prof. Aslam talking about uh, Islamic economics, Islamic finance, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I, I proceed on, on, this, uh, on the basis of this area, uh, this, this uh, metaphor between Shajara Tayyibah and Shajara Khabitha. Asluha Thabit wa Farwaha Fissama. Okay, so that's the introduction, and then different models of um, uh, different namudaj uh, of, uh, of Islamic religious sciences. Uh, so I'm not talking about Islamic studies, because Islamic studies, in my understanding, is very broad. Uh, it covers all kinds of things, and Prophet Muhammad defined it. It's a, it's a, uh, what Islam, uh, what is said, um, any study that pertains to Islam. That was my original point with Dr. Abdul Rauf in 1983. Not to use Islamic studies, because to me, and that is why in IIUM we don't call the kulia of Islamic economics. We don't call the kulia of Islamic engineering. We don't say the kulia of Islamic medicine. Because to us, all these, all these alum, uh, alum, follow the kifaya, are Islamic, as long as the Asluha Thabits. Okay. So we have different models. Indonesia is very, very interesting. You have the most, you know, most liberal, and you also have the most conservative. Most liberal, you might find maybe in Paramadina, you might also find it maybe in, in UEN um, Jogja. And then, of course, you have the traditional bond of something preserving uh, the, the, uh, the classical uh, paradigm. Uh, but, but Indonesia is, is more dynamic. The really uh, unchanging Jumud uh, model I found in, the, uh, in, in Patani, 
I went to one uh, Pondo in Patani, uh, and I found, uh, well, good that they don't have television. That's okay for me because I didn't really need unless I want to know about what's going on in the world. Uh, no newspapers, no radio, and, and only the yellow books. <laughs> Subhanallah. No mathematics. The mathematics, we were great scientists. Of course, no physics, no chemistry, no biology, no geography, no history. I just go into Subhanallah. So is this, uh, of course, I mean, Aslah has said it, we don't grow without the branches. <laughs> But again, as we have found it, again, it has to be thabit in two, if you go into this, uh, you know, the idea of two kitabs. Uh, kitab al-Wahi or Kitab al kaum So, as has to be thabit fi kitabai, if you like. You know, al-Wahi wa al kaum Okay, then, talking about in Malaysia, we have also several, you know, integrated, hybrid, pure, applied model academy. But again, Islam started a long time ago. Uh, fiqh and uh, Sharia and economics, Sharia and science, uh, and so on. Usi is also trying to do the same thing. So we have tried this uh, in the Malaysian context. Um, and of course, in the Arab world, the, the model in studying Islamic religious sciences in Mecca, uh, in Medina, is not the same as Umul Qura, for instance. It's not the same as in, 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 in Riyadh, Imam Muhammad. And of course, if you compare with Egypt or Libya or even Morocco, you have different models. But as long as Aslu Hal Thabit, Furu'aha, okay. Of course, the tabit has to be in, in aqidah, sharia, and akhlaq, apart from the kitabai, al wahi wal kaw. So, uh, but in the West, of course, the Western approach uh, differs from, from the Muslim approaches uh, because of um, different purposes, the objectives, of, on top of the objectives. For the West studying Islam, they do not really study Islamic studies as such. They are more interested in the Arab Near Eastern studies. So Chicago studies Islam under Near Eastern studies. And uh, Islam is studied in, in London under School of Oriental and African Studies. So area studies were the uh, framework within which religion is being seen. And that also uh, reflects a certain perspective, philosophical, metaphysical perspective of religion. That is to say, religion is socially constructed. And therefore, Islam is studied as part of Middle Eastern culture, history, civilization. Until the devastating critique by Edward Sahi with his Orientalism, then they realized, oh my God, we are just instruments of, of colonialism. So we better, uh, you know, get away from this, and then they went into, of course, postmodernism. because I think uh, Edward Said was also, in a way, uh, had elements of postmodernism. With postmodernism, there's no center anymore. Everything is decentered. Uh, everything is relativized. There's nothing absolute anymore. There's no Islam as such. There are many Islams, just as there are many modernities, and there are many Islams. So people don't want to talk about what they call, uh, you know, essentialism. Uh, and they blame uh, Gibb and uh, uh, Avery and von Grunewald uh, and uh, the others, uh, French, um, who talk about the essence of Islam. And I think that's a great contribution of the old Orientalists. They saw the essence, but the new Orientalists, post-Orientalism, refused to deal with essence because there is no uh, there's no one Islam. There are Muslims, and we better look at Muslims. And to that extent, therefore, whoever claims to be Muslim, we have to study them. So they are Islam, and that is why they continue to defend uh, Ahmadiyya, Qadiyaniyya, as Islam. In the book of John Esposito, I think this is where I, I would disagree with him, with, with our good friend John. He included uh, you know, Ahmadiyya and all that. 
Uh, well, okay, this is a Western perspective, because they claim to be Muslims. And therefore, you have to talk about that. But for us, Aslu have thabit. Our aqidah is very clear. Uh, the distinction between uh, the, uh, the, the, what you call the, the orthodox and the unorthodox. But for the, uh, for the Westerners, it's nothing orthodox. <laughs> um, and, and so this, the emphasis is more on diversities. Um, and, and of course, uh, there are people in studying Islam in Southeast Asia, including, um, including um, uh, was Roth, William Roth, and was, was trying to highlight Southeast Asian Islam, Islam in the Malay world. Uh, as an alternative, and I, I tend to support that. Not that I, I'm talking about different Islams, but I think the, uh, that the Islam in the Malay world also needs to be to be centered rather than marginalized. Uh, and, and I think that the things which uh, Islam in the Malay world uh, can contribute uh, to the uh, to um, the discourse on Islam uh, in the Middle East or in in East Asia. East East Asia or West Asia, depending on where you stand. Um, and after 9-11, the third phase, after 9-11, the war on terror, uh, in fact, uh, Islam has been terrorized. Uh, the focus is on you know, the distinction between political Islam uh, and, and the way out is Sufist Islam uh, or, um, or um, uh, Sufi Islam. Uh, as the way out. Again, creating again dualisms of their own making. But uh, for us, in, 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 in the Malay world, uh, we have already harmonized the political and the spiritual in the Malay world. Uh, with the Malay Sultanate, with the Sultanate in Aceh, and, and all that, and Brunei, another a continuation of that unity between the political and the spiritual, even the sophistic, uh, as, as far as no longer something strange to Islam, is in the, in the ibadah, in the Malay world, when we pray the word salah. After the prayer, there is uh, awrad, iri, alawd, and the dhikrullah. We're not saying this is part of salah, but this is part of the tradition, religious tradition, in the Malay world. You do it just after salah, <coughs> salah and then just go straight to your door. Okay, you can do that. But in the Malay world, you stay back, pray, I uh, mean, uh, make the du'a, follow the du'a. Of course, this is bid'ah. Uh, the issue is, is it, is it uh, bid'ah hasana or, or bid'ah madmum? Uh, that will need another, another seminar from <laughs> to decide on that. But I'm just saying that, that the Malay world has already integrated what, is, what has been failed to be integrated uh, in the Middle East. You have political Islam on the one hand, you have Sufistic Islam in the Turuk, Sufiya, in Morocco, in Algeria, uh, in Africa, Tijaniya, what have you, and all those weird things going on in the name of Tasawwuf and Sufism. And then you have political Islam. And all that. But in, in the Malay world, we have met Hamanah already. Um, so I think there's something that the Malay world can contribute. But I'm not going along with the uh, postmodernist idea of breaking up the center into small bits and pieces. Everything is valid, everything is local, uh, and there's nothing absolute. And there are many Islams. I would disagree with that. There are many Muslims, yes. But Asluha, uh, Thabit, in Aqidah of Tawheed. Okay, so in, in, uh, in the West, of course, you have, after the Orientalists, you have four major uh, leaders in, uh, on Islamic studies with, uh, uh, with Fazul Rahman, uh, Ismail Farooqi, uh, Said Hussein Nasser, top um, oh, three. Some people will even put uh, Mahmoud Ayyub uh, as one. Um, and of course, now, Alhamdulillah, there are also uh, people like Hamza Yusuf in, in America, uh, which is setting up his own Zaytuna College, offering a Muslim liberal arts education. 
Muslim liberal arts. The synthesis Prof. Osman was talking about. But with a Talhidic epistemological basis. And so the synthesis is being tried out in Zaytuna. Maybe also Chicago uh, American University on behalf of an uh, Arabic uh, Azhar program also offered online in Chicago. So to me, Prof. Osman talk about permanence and change. I'm just adding to that authenticity and relevance. Asala and also um, Masriya or Muasriya. I think how do we manage this authenticity on the one hand and contemporaneity on the other hand, relevance? Um, it's interesting also to look at uh, what Dr. Atalullah Siddiqui's report, which he submitted to um, MP Bill Ramel which reflects how the Muslims in UK looked at the so-called Islamic studies disciplines in British universities. Uh, of course, uh, Prof. Jabal Robert can say a lot about that because he, he has lived in, in a very important institution, Birmingham. Has it become a Malay village? <laughs> Not yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we okay from from the from the Western. Uh, we and uh, what I'm arguing is that um, I have two points to to conclude from the, this early observation. There is a major difference between the way secularist non-Muslim academic institutions approach the subject. Uh, what Prof. Osman called the epistemic content, and the way believing Muslim, mainstream Muslim institutions do it. The former tends to be non communal knowledge for its own sake, non-normative, fragmented, critical, analytical, and premised upon certain Western philosophical, ideological, or socio social scientific theoretical presuppositions or biases. Well, the latter, this, the Muslim ones, tends to be more normative in the sense that the knowledge of Islam and Muslims is intended explicitly or implicitly to lead the Muslim students to a better understanding and practice of the religion, organized and structured on the basis of the interconnectivity of the aqidah, sharia, and akhlaq, Arabic language, uh, Islamic education, and hadara islamiyah. And generally, of course, the, the Muslim ones are non-critical at the undergraduate level, but at the postgraduate can be very critical, uh, designed to preserve the authenticity, authority, and continuity of Islamic teachings, values, and norms based upon uh, the authoritative works of Muslim scholars and Islamic intellectual legacy, or turaf, aqli. And the second point I wish to highlight is the fact that the curriculum of Islamic religious sciences, or olum diniya, or olum shara'iya, or olum naqliya, in public universities in Muslim countries has never been uniform or monolithic. Rather, it has undergone dynamic evolutionary changes with new configurations and structures to adapt to changing times and circumstances. So the Indonesian, a good example of Indonesia, is, is the socio-political context dictating on education. And things change because of that. Uh, I'm suggesting that um, while there is this need to, to integrate or harmonize between Aluma Dunia uh, with the social sciences and also the Tabi Ayya sciences, with the Alum Nakliya, we cannot just uh, take it as they are. And here, going back to Al-Ghazali's uh, precedent, 
he was appreciative of philosophy, of logic, but certain fundamental things which contradict the usul he took out. But otherwise, the philosophical, rationalistic, logical thinking is very much encouraged by Al-Wazali. So there has to be a, discri uh, a discrimination of what is ma'roof, what is khair, what is good from what is uh, not so good uh, in the ulum al dunya or ulum tabi'iyya or ulum uh, ishtima'iyya. So we have to um, evaluate, analyze, and filter so that the false al batil or the reprehensible aspects al magmuma uh, in terms of theories, methodologies, applications. Okay, five more minutes. Okay, thank you very much. I will rush quickly. Um, would be contained or contextualized. So maintaining the integrity and authenticity uh, of the Islamic religious sciences. Okay, then I will go straight to the second issue, the context of civilizational crisis. Because in my paper, I said that um, uh, we, we are facing a civilizational crisis. Um, and, uh, uh, and this is agreed upon by even Western uh, scholars who are very critical of what's going on. Um, and uh, my focus is not so much on the West, but on Muslim countries uh, with corruption, um, with uh, embroil in the cauldron of political, social, economic turmoil, uh, strengthening this and spreading the culture of corruption, fraud, abuse of power, and moral degradation in Muslim countries. It is quite understandable that many people are deeply touched by the proliferation of global crisis, of course, 2008 and all that. And I, I can quote many scholars, Western scholars, and I'm just quoting here James Martin, the meaning of the 21st century, who said that uh, humankind finds itself today in a non-sustainable course with grand scale catastrophes, uh, and, and so on. And uh, also the, the view of uh, Kevin um, Jackson, who came up with the idea of moral, cultural, mental, model, MCMM approach, which corresponds to the Islamic approach. Because at the bottom, he says, it's not quantitative, it's not structural, it's not legal, it has to do with moral values. And this is coming from a Western scholar. Uh, and I say this is what uh, I would agree with him. Because he says uh, in this uh, quotation, in the second paragraph, he says, um, what is this? Uh, well, uh, uh, they must be addressed by more nuanced ethical thinking and collective activity grounded in virtue, uh, regard for the common good, maslaha, uh, as though he's talking, as though he's a Maliki, you know, jurist, regard for the common good and uh, respect for the long-term preservation of market ecology. This is not possible, Sharia. Uh, and as well as by paying greater attention to the cultivation of intangible, intangible capital assets such as reputational and social capital. So we need to be more sensitive to the relationship between uh, ethics and economics and attuned to the importance of, uh, and so on and so forth. But uh, the disease of corruption and abuse of power in the Muslim world is phenomenal. And I think Islamic studies uh, must also be, uh, be adjusted uh, to, to also deal with this, uh, with what I consider the spiritual uh, crisis uh, in the Muslim world. Uh, Here. 
So actually, I'm going back to uh, okay. While we while we expand the branches, uh, or uh, but let's strengthen the spiritual root. Because if the spiritual root is not strengthened, then your entrepreneurial, your business, your economic. Uh, might take you to beyond the seven heavens and uproot it. Uh, this is uprooted above the earth. We don't want that to be uprooted. Uh, because if the, the spiritual dimension is not sanctioned, and that goes back to Tazkia to Naps um, and, um, and uh, purification of, of the heart, which um, of course, um, is being taught in some universities in Islamic civilization. But I was saying yesterday uh, on Saturday that when we teach Islamic civilization, we tend to focus more on the on the physical aspect of zahir uh, al dunya, the scientific, technological, uh, the archaeology, the architecture, uh, the technology, uh, but the spiritual roots. Uh, it is missing, and that is in tasawwuf. Uh, of course, we don't have any any problem with the word tasawwuf in the Malay world, but in some areas in the Middle East, tasawwuf is is taboo. Okay, let's not talk about tasawwuf. Talk about ethics, Islamic spiritual ethics. Uh, fine, uh, but uh, but it must be strengthened. Um, and uh, here we can go back to the idea of uh, of uh, you know. The idea of uh, being careful on the day of judgment, on the day when Yawmana Yamfa'umaru wala banun illa man atullah bi qalbin salim. So, how to go back to, to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi qulubin salim? How to go back with these clean hearts? Uh, and the hearts, Allah says, are of course uh, affected by diseases. Uh, are you coming to give me the final message? The final one? Okay. Uh, save your energy, stay there, I, will, I, will, I take the cue from you, thank you very much. Okay, so, fine. So, uh, so that, that's the message. Yes, we can, we can expand by all means, as long as Aslu had thabit, and now it has to be athbat, <laughs> more firm. <laughs> because, because I'm afraid that the entrepreneurship, the commercial aspect, the political aspect might also bring in poisons which ultimately make the roots also dead. So I think we need to go back for the Malay Muslim world, no problem, we go back to Tasawwuf. But Tasawwuf integrated, not Tasawwuf isolated. Not Tasawwuf in the, uh, in, in say, Turut Sufiya, which is removed from the rest of the world. Tasawwuf in the Malay world is, is, this, is, is is, is the inner core of the religion. With the outer core is the Sharia and Akhla. And you cannot separate the three of them. Uh, Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. Assalamu alaikum wa Thank you, Tanjri. And now, may we invite our moderator, Associate Professor Dr. Jabal Muhammad Wabin, to open the discussion session with our speaker.
So uh, could we please have observations, comments, and questions? Oh, that's great. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Be a good idea if you identify yourself and where you are coming from. Uh, Mohammed Aslam Hanif uh, from the International Islamic University of Malaysia. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Jabal, you got your job back as moderator. It's innovation because you are uh, introduced at the end. Um, a couple of questions or comments, questions to, the, to both the speakers. Uh, Prof. Osman mentioned something about Farlai and Farlai. Uh, I think one of the other challenges that we face today is whether or not the content of what is Fardu Ayn and Fardu Kifaya, and I'm referring more to Fardu Ayn, does that content also change? Because that's, I think, the, the, the more sensitive, sensitive thing. Fardu Kifaya, we may, we may agree, but Fardu Ayn, does that also change as we go along? Uh, to Prof Kama, um, uh, this idea of um, disciplines, being firmly rooted, and I would like maybe just to get your opinion on, on social sciences today. Uh, we do have in many universities now, uh, as you mentioned, as you pointed out in your paper, where they are looking at uh, these social sciences from an Islamic perspective. Uh, and they say, or they claim, they have that roots. But isn't, again, the issue or the challenge? It's the understanding of what what makes up those roots that would be different in different programs. So my question is, do we accept all the, the models as acceptable models of, of uh, contemporary Islamic studies, um, provided they have the roots, or are we going to be able to now uh, differentiate between what we consider to be, to be roots, uh, firmly established uh, against other people's interpretations or different. So, is there going to be some kind of standardization, if I can put it that way, of what makes up these rules? Uh, <clears throat> your question whether there can be change or not when it comes to any part of the My answer is yes. But now we have to explain to make sure that there's no misunderstanding. And if there's a lot of misunderstanding, let's take an example. Prayer, salat, or salat is of course, cannot be changed in terms of the... Uh, but what can change is what we think is the wisdom of salat. Maybe over decades some people to explain instead of the hikmah, the underlying wisdom of prayer. Nowadays you see uh, some, uh, some medical doctors say that, oh, prayer, for example, we, in terms of uh, health, in terms of the performance of the organs of our parts of the body, uh, then when you do your prostration, for example, according to current knowledge uh, of uh, medical of the body, you have circulation and so on. Others just mentioned that before. That's, that is something. There's nothing wrong with that one. But the value of prayer itself, I think the fundamental one has not changed. For this example, so it's nothing wrong in the curriculum about salat, apart from talking about the rukun, about building it, how, how, to, how to pray and, and so on. We talk about what are the good things when we pray either alone or to, to, to the collective uh, prayer, in terms of collective prayer, the social value, the value. Okay, maybe something, maybe there is something, or maybe even there, people in the past have already mentioned uh, about that. But what is the possibility? We allow the possibility of these changes, uh, which doesn't affect the permanent. The, what is the permanent thing there? The value, the necessity of prayer, and the value of prayer. Something with articles of faith. Uh, the Akamai Man, the six articles of faith. Let's say, uh, even, even for example, uh, the 
first article with regard to belief in God, belief in the angels, God and God, all related to science, and they have some science. There. So there's nothing wrong there to employ uh, new data, new information in science to explain the six articles of faith. Now, this is what I call, in general, generally speaking, I'm talking about the role of the role of akli a human, as different from nakli. So there are two types of arguments, nakli and akli. So we can use akli arguments, we can, which can change. Certainly the, the kind of science, scientific knowledge that we have today is far, far more comprehensive than that we had during the time of al Ghazali or Fakhr bin Razi. Yeah, so that does not prevent. So in other words, we have to see. Never pass judgment that oh, for time nothing, nothing can be, uh, nothing can be changed. Yeah, there is the role of ugly argument depending on the period in which we live. Thank you. I think one key example is also uh, fasting, rather than. Like that, but the, the benefits of fasting. I mean, these days people go more into the scientific benefits mm -hmm. than the right, the, the, the Rukulia benefits. Okay, I also would agree with uh, Professor Man that uh, the, uh, the content of uh, follow, follow eye knowledge can also uh, increase uh, or be added depending on the uh, changing circumstances. Um, I think we are going to a point in education where, let's say, the computer is 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 the is the uh, is is the basic tool. The pen, as the pen, the column used to be the basic tool. Nowadays, the computer. So having a computer becomes a follow eye uh, obligation. Uh, even if it is produced by Microsoft, or Apple is still can. <laughs> Um, so, but going back to uh, Imam al Ghazali, this is where I, I, I like to revive Imam al Ghazali's thoughts to him. And he says this look, the cleansing of your heart is very important. All of us, we have hearts, and our hearts are subject to diseases. And we need to really take care of our hearts. And to him, this is far okay? I I agree with him. Um, okay, on your second question about um, social sciences uh, with, their, with their roots, um, even in the natural sciences, uh, they all have metaphysical presuppositions um, based on either uh, the positivistic, naturalistic, empirical worldview for these natural sciences, or post-positivism, um, empiricism, and of course now uh, neo-postmodernism uh, and post-postmodernism and post-post-positivism uh, post, uh, uh, in the uh, in the social sciences, and they're all rooted in uh, in a particular worldview which contradict the Tawhidic worldview, and therefore uh, their roots uh, are problematic. But there are the fruits. As for the fruits, that you can take some fruits, although the roots may be problematic, but the, the fruits are not poisonous. So those non-poisonous uh, fruits can, of course, be, be consumed by the Muslim and even uh, synthesized uh, with, uh, with uh, Islamic religious knowledge disciplines. Uh, so you, you again do this uh, selective uh, um, adoption of what is khair, what is ma'roof, uh, what is beneficial, uh, what is what Imam Ghazali called uh, mahmuda, praiseworthy, as opposed to what is madhmuma. Uh, so there are certain um, concepts, theories, findings in the social sciences which are useful 
for Muslims to understand al-waq, understand the social realities and social facts, which uh, we can benefit from uh, sociology, um, psychology, communication, as long as they are based on empirical um, research and the findings are, um, are actually um, acceptable and not contradictory uh, to the Islamic roots, then they, you, can, you can, of course, enrich yourself with that knowledge. Uh, I think a lot can be benefited from some of the aspects of, let's say, uh, clinical psychology, although the, the philosophy of, of the self in Western psychology uh, is actually uh, not Tawhidic, uh, but where the findings are actually based on empirical uh, scientific